Good Wednesday to you. It's July 1st. It's time for your Wednesday Devo. Pastor Jeff here, and I want to just rehash a couple things I mentioned on Sunday as well. If you were with us, we began a new teaching series um, called Loving Your Neighbor, and uh, we talked about loving our literal neighbor uh, this last week, uh, the neighbor that's right across the street from you, the neighbor that is next door to you, the neighbor who lives in the trailer or down the hall from you in the apartment complex, wherever it might be that you find yourself living, you have a neighbor somewhere nearby in close proximity. So we talked about loving our neighbor. And so what I challenged you with was this jump over the fence challenge. Now today is Wednesday, so you've got a few more days before we get together again on Sunday. And I hear back from some of you what you've been able to do. Maybe it's, again, just a simple note, a thank you card. Uh, perhaps it's baking them cookies, perhaps it's just knocking on the door and finding out how they're doing, introducing yourself if you've never met them before. Uh, the, the, the jump over the fence challenge <clears throat> is still live, still ready to go, something you can practice anytime, not just this week. Okay, so let me just encourage you to do that if you haven't already done something this week. You've got plenty of time to do that and would love to hear some of your stories on Sunday when we gather together. Okay, so that's number one. Well, I did it. Uh, after asking for one for the last several years, last couple of years anyway, basically begging and pleading to be able to spend the $39 plus tax, I finally did it. For Father's Day, Carol gave me a beautiful card with some money inside and told me pretty boldly, she said, go and get one. So I did. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and bought a My Pillow, one of these. You've seen the commercials, right? Mike Lindell, whatever his name is. Um, now, just a bit of a bat story for you before I tell you about this. Unlike my wife, <clears throat> she can sleep anywhere. Like anything that's moving, anything that's, doesn't matter. She can sleep anywhere. I am the opposite. I have to be in the right place with the right temperature, and of course, I need the right pillow. So over the years, I've tried a lot of different pillows, but none of them seem to work all that well. And just last year, I found this really good bamboo pillow that I really, really liked. But I didn't want to stop with that. I wanted even better sleep. Enter my pillow. So just a week ago or so, I bought it. I couldn't wait to get home, jump into bed, and give it a world once and for all. So as you can imagine, my anticipation that day, that night was ex extremely high. I was so excited to be able to go to bed and use the my pillow. And so that's what happened. I was ready to go. The only problem was this. Unlike those commercials where the people share their testimony of falling asleep virtually on the spot, guess what, friends? I couldn't sleep. I'm not sure what it was that kept me up that first night. Either way, while the pillow was comfortable, it did not lead me to the dreamland like I hoped it would. And then just two nights ago, it happened again. Even though I had my new my pillow, I could not get to sleep. I share all this because I think we all face disappointments like this. Some of our disappointments are pretty small, like hoping that a crazy pillow will help us sleep better. But other disappointments we face are far more serious. We hope a new drug or medicine will work, but it doesn't. We hope for a new procedure that will take away the pain once and for all, but it's just like the other remedies that we've tried in the past, basically worthless. We hope our new job will be better than the last job, but in time, we're sadly disappointed. It's really not that much different. Uh, we hope for all sorts of things. You know, many of our kids who are graduating from college or high school this year hope to have this big, grad, uh, big graduation party or this big you know, graduation ceremony, only to be sadly disappointed that they were not able to do that in most cases. And so we've got lots of people who are facing disappointments at this time of the year. Some of you had hoped to be back working as you were before, and you are sadly disappointed because you're still at home, and it's not easy to work from home for most of us. So the point is, we all share disappointments in life. Some are more serious than others. Nevertheless, the bigger and more pressing question, I think, is this. How will we respond when we are met with yet another disappointment? 
So in light of this, let me just encourage you to consider reading Psalm 42. I came across this just yesterday as I was thinking about what to say today. And I, I was struck by the words of the psalmist here. It's not David uh, in this instance, but it is the uh, descendants of Korah. That's who we're told this psalm is written by. But let me just read you a few of these lines that come from Psalm 42. It goes like this. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you. O God, I thirst for God, the living God. When, when can I go and stand before him? Day and night, I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? This writer, this persona that is being developed here in Psalm 42 is clearly someone who is dealing with great discouragement, great disappointment. His God... Her God is not showing up clearly, and they are being taunted day and night by their enemies. Where is this God of yours? The psalmist goes on to say this, My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sounds of a great celebration. So again, the psalmist is <clears throat> thinking about the past, thinking about the good old days, you might say. When he, was, he or she was able to go to the temple and worship him in great celebration. But that's not happening today, right? He says, why am I discouraged in verse 5? Why is my heart so sad? I will put, here's the transition, here's the point I want to make. The psalmist writes this, why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And so the psalmist goes back and forth, back and forth, but this is how the psalmist ends this. And there's some more in here as well, but at the very end, he says it again. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? Maybe we can put the word in disappointed there. Why am I so disappointed about my pillow, about my job, about my, you know, graduation that didn't happen, about the trip that had to be canceled why am I so disappointed? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. So it seems to me like one of the best ways that we can respond in these days of disappointment, when we are discouraged once again by something that's happened to us, let us do what the psalmist does here. Let's be honest about our disappointment. Let's admit that. But at the end of the day, let's put our hope back in God, praising him regardless of our circumstances, friends, regardless of our circumstances. He sent his son for us before we ever had the opportunity to love him. He shows us agape love. We should show him agape love in return. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. So my prayer for you today is that you be able to do that. Maybe you take some time and read through Psalm 42 and also Psalm 43. They kind of go together. And read those two Psalms. Meditate upon those today if you're facing one of those days, one of those seasons of disappointment. Psalm 42 and Psalm 43 would be great places for you to turn in God's word today to encourage you. So my hope and prayer is that that would encourage you today. God bless you. We'll tune in again. We'll see you again on Friday. Dan has promised he will have a Friday update video for you this week. We missed last week, but uh, we'll give Dan a break for that one. Uh, give him some grace on that one. He had his granddaughter with him and could not record one. But this week, he assures me he is going to record one. So looking, looking forward to that. Looking forward to some more Roy's words of wisdom as well. So God bless you all. Have a blessed Wednesday. It's hot out there. Stay cool. We'll see you Friday.